Hey everybody, this is uh, Joe Price, uh, Diceman X on the uh, forums. I decided to do something a little bit different for uh, this video. I uh, decided to um, voice it instead of uh, using annotations. Uh, the reason for that is these Hoytronic builds are getting uh, much more involved, much more complex, and uh, annotations are just not going to cut anymore as far as uh, explaining what's going on. So uh, from here on in, I'll be uh, I'll be voicing a lot of these uh, videos, especially if it's uh, Hoytronics uh, builds. In any case, um, this particular vi uh, video is going to focus on uh, Pasco Protected Door. It's a uh, updated version. My previous uh, version uh, is kind of low tech. This is uh, a much more involved uh, version, as you'll uh, see momentarily. Now I'll first uh, demonstrate how the uh, Pasco Protected Door actually works without delving into the mechanism just yet and uh, afterwards uh, we'll take a look at the uh, details of the uh, mechanism. So we'll have a, um, an actual mini tutorial as far as uh, just some Hoytronics basics which I think uh, you'll find uh, quite enlightening. It'll give you an opportunity to better understand what is really going on in a lot of these uh, Hoytronics uh, builds. So in any case let's head over to the, um, the teleport hub. So if we check the uh, directory We'll note that uh, there's now a new listing here, right at the bottom, programmable, passcode door, uh, and that's code that B9. So this is one of the uh, differences uh, between this passcode door and the previous version, and that is it is fully programmable. You can actually uh, set what the, you want the key code to, uh, to be. Okay, in any case, uh, B9, let's head over there. All right, so here we are. So this is what it looks like. Of course, the, uh, the actual mechanism is completely hidden from view. All we see is just the uh, keypad. There's a couple of additional levers here marked C and uh, R. We'll explain what those are in a second. And the actual door is on the uh, far right here. It's uh, jungle um, or temple uh, bricks. They're a little bit lit up uh, um, and currently uh, closed. All right. so. The way that this uh, functions is actually a three-digit uh, number that has to be uh, input into the uh, keypad. And um, as I'm inputting the numbers, they'll actually show up on screen on the uh, far left here. All right, so let's just try a random code here. Uh, let's say uh, uh, we'll try one, two, three. All right, there we go. So one, two, three shows up on screen, and we'll note that door didn't open. This was the wrong code and red light comes on to signify the wrong code has been input. All right, so if we wish to try again, we just hit the uh, C lever, that's the uh, clear uh, lever, clears the uh, number from the uh, screen, shuts off the uh, red light, and now we can uh, try again. So let's try again. Let's try um, six, seven, eight. All right, no luck again. Door remains closed, red light comes on, wrong code has been input. All right, so let's clear. All right, so this time, let's see what happens if we were to input the correct uh, key code, which is 993. Let's take a look. There we have it. All right, so door opens, green light comes on, we now have vault access. Yeah, let's take a look. All right, so here we have it. It's just like before. Just uh, a few more uh, platinum coins have been added. I'll grab some for uh, grab some for later. All right, so let's head back out. All right, so to shut down the uh, door again and reset everything, we'll just hit uh, the C lever as before. There we go. Door locked. All right, just to demonstrate that uh, we can input the same key code as before and open the door, 993, let's take a look. All right, it opens up. Everything works as previously. Okay, so let's hit uh, clear once again. And this time around, let's take a look at uh, what we would have to do to program a new key code into this uh, into this mechanism. So to program a new one, we will actually need to know the existing uh, key code. We'll have to clear that from memory first, and then input a new key code into uh, memory. So to clear 
from uh, memory, the existing key code, we have to use the uh, R uh, lever. So when I hit the R lever, blue light comes on, just indicating that we're in reset mode. That's what the R stands for, reset. All right, so let's input the uh, existing code to clear it. 993. All right, so this time the door does not open, red light comes on, and this signifies that indeed we've cleared the existing uh, code. So as things stand right now, there is no code for the uh, door anymore. All right, so let's clear. And now to input a new key code, again, we hit the uh, R lever, blue light comes on, and now we can input uh, something else. Uh, so let's input, uh, let's say uh, 228. There we have it. So we input the new key code, door actually opens, green light comes on, and now this has been set in the mechanism's memory. The code 228 is now going to be opening up the uh, door. All right, so let's clear. So let's first demonstrate that the old code no longer works, and then we'll demonstrate how the, uh, the new code will open the door. All right, so old code was 993, let's give it a shot. There we go, no luck, red light comes on, door stays closed. All right, let's clear. <clears throat> let's try the new code, 228. Works perfectly. All right, so there we have it. We have a passcode protected door with uh, full uh, output. You can actually visualize the number that has been um, uh, input into the mechanism and it's fully programmable now. So quite a uh, step forward as far as these uh, passcode uh, mechanisms are concerned. Now, the passcode protected doors, um, it's pretty much just a toy here. Um, this is just a, a way to demonstrate some of the, um, um, some of the uh, mechanisms, how they can be uh, used. But uh, in a moment, we'll discuss uh, what exactly is going on in this internal mechanism, how we essentially can um, write and read from uh, memory and just some other uh, tricks such as how is it that we can have just one keypad and yet uh, input, input uh, multi-digit uh, numbers and get them to actually uh, show up uh, on screen. Uh, this will have uh, a wide variety of uh, applications down the line. For instance, uh, if we are to generate any kind of um, uh, decimal inputs for uh, computers, um, we'll have to use uh, a mechanism perhaps similar to some of the mechanisms that I used uh, for this particular uh, passcode protected door. All right, so let's shut things down here. Hit the uh, clear but, uh, clear uh, lever. Teleport back to uh, home base. And uh, in just a moment, we'll take a look at um, exactly how this passcode door functions. All right. So now let's take a look at how this uh, passcode uh, mechanism door actually uh, operates. And um, uh, take the opportunity to actually uh, also talk about Hoytronics, what it is, and um, what are some of the uh, key mechanisms that appear not only in the Pasco Protected Door build, but uh, in just about any other Hoytronics uh, build as well. So the first thing I wanted to uh, start with is just the clarification as to what Hoytronics actually is and why it's used in these uh, in these builds. So uh, Terraria already has an, a way in which um, uh, signals can be conveyed or propagated, and that's just through wiring. So you could have a, a switch, a lever, you can have a pressure plate. You can wire it to some sort of output, whether it's uh, an actuator, a torch, door, so on and so forth. Um, the only issue with, um, with wiring in Terraria is that it doesn't allow for any kind of logic. You can't have if-then statements. You can't have inputs that alter the output. Whenever um, you set up uh, wiring in Terraria, uh, it is as it is. You can't alter it. You can't alter uh, signal uh, pathways unless you actually uh, add wiring and remove some wiring. Hoytronics, on the other hand, does allow for logic, meaning you can have an input or multiple inputs, and they can alter the outputs that you uh, generate. So the fundamental way in which um, that is achieved is through 
uh, path alteration um, uh, as far as paths that NPCs take. Now the thing about hoiks is that they can propel NPCs at very fast speeds. Without hoiks, the best that uh, engineers could do previously was just use birds from bird statues, but they're fairly limited as far as uh, how fast they can travel. And while birds enabled certain relatively small engineering builds previously, now with Hoytronics, we can build much more elaborate, much more involved uh, things. Um, and the reason why um, the signaling is a lot faster now is because the jump from one hoik tooth to the next takes one game tick. So one sixtieth of a uh, second, um, one second basically to uh, jump 60 times. And thus uh, it allows for extremely rapid uh, signaling. All right, so um, we can see in the game here, um, I've uh, set up um, a, a hoik uh, paths here. There is a uh, junction that will ultimately uh, dictate, based on the actuation state of the tooth right at the junction, it'll dictate whether or not the skeleton will go straight across or whether it'll end up going up and uh, to the right. So this is to demonstrate how we can have an input that causes a path alteration and thus um, the, um, the signaling agent, the NPC, the skeleton in this case, will go down either one path or another path depending on what sort of input we have. So the input, it's controlled by the uh, lever on the, on the uh, right here. And um, when it's uh, flipped, you can see that it changes the actuation state of this uh, downhoik, downhoik tooth that's right at the uh, junction. Just to show the uh, wiring here, we'll see that uh, it's just connected directly to um, the actuated uh, tooth. So skeletons are approximately three tiles high, which means that when the skeleton is going to be hoiked to the right here, when it actually passes through the uh, junction point, it will um, uh, coincide with both this uh, bottom hoik tooth and this top hoik tooth, up hoik uh, in this case. And there's going to be competition between the two, but the bottom hoik is the one that wins. Therefore, when that bottom hoik tooth is in the foreground, that means the skeleton will go straight across. And uh, along the way, it can pass over certain pressure plates uh, generates certain outputs. So in this particular uh, setup, we see a pressure plate here connected to the um, um, unlit uh, torch. So when the skeleton goes straight across, it'll turn that torch on. Let's take a look. There we go. I'll do that again. Turn the torch off. So skeleton goes straight across. Now let's uh, hit the, uh, the right lever here. Actuate that particular Hoik tooth. So now the skeleton, when it passes um, through, when it passes um, uh, through the uh, junction, it'll get hoiked up instead of going straight across. Let's take a look. There we go. So there's a uh, uh, another pressure plate along the uh, top path connected to the torch just immediately above. So now all of a sudden we have a completely different output based on the fact that we've actuated that hoik tooth right at the junction. So this is fundamental to Hoytronics, this entire idea of having an input or multiple inputs altering the uh, path that are signaling agents and NPC skeletons or uh, other uh, NPCs, uh, the paths that they actually uh, end up uh, taking. So this is actually one of two ways in which this can be accomplished. Um, so what we're looking at now is um, just um, uh, two hoik uh, paths that are right at right angles to one another. But the other way that this can be accomplished is illustrated in this uh, setup just directly below. So here we only have one hoik track. However, whether or not any of these pressure plates are going to be hit is actually dependent on the state of actuation or deactuation of a couple of uh, hoik teeth. So let's take a look at uh, the hoik teeth directly below me here. You can see that um, there's a top hoik that's currently deactuated, it's in the foreground, and immediately below it is a bottom hoik that's in the background. So the effect of this is the top hoik will slightly elevate the skeleton when it passes through, elevate it just enough off the ground so that it will not hit the pressure plate that's a little bit further down the line. Now the spacing here is very important, the pressure plate has to necessarily be too 
tiles uh, to the left of this um, top hoik so that the uh, pressure plate is not going to be uh, activated. Yeah, so uh, the exact same thing holds true for the uh, two uh, pressure plates on the left here. Same deal, you have um, the uh, top hoiks. When the skeleton passes through them, they'll lift the skeleton. Those pressure plates will not be touched. Let's demonstrate. There we go, nothing is happening. Just to check the wiring here, you can see that the pressure plates are hooked up to the torches directly below. The torches are not getting activated when the skeleton passes uh, through this track. However, we can toggle the uh, top hoik and the uh, bottom hoik here. We'll do that through the switch here. When I hit the switch, we can see that the top hoik is now in the background and the bottom hoik is in the foreground. So what this means is the skeleton that's going to pass through here is now actually going to make contact with that pressure blade and thus is going to be turning on that uh, torch. Let's demonstrate. Here we go. Torch is now lit. Let's try again. Torch is shut off when passing over that uh, pressure blade. So this is the other fundamental way in which the path can be altered. So instead of having two paths at 90 degrees, it's essentially the same track, it's just that um, the skeleton will either pass over a pressure plate or be slightly elevated just above that pressure plate, and um, thus its pathway is ever so slightly uh, altered this way. Now this particular uh, design is by Richard Lewis, who I have um, uh, in uh, my uh, featured uh, channels. So Richard Lewis uh, is the um, the person that has actually done a lot of work on hoist already. He has a number of uh, excellent guides, um, video guides, and uh, guides on the official uh, Terrier forums. So definitely uh, recommend that you check out his uh, videos and uh, his written guides because they uh, they very nicely um, uh, summarize what. Uh, what sort of hoik systems um, uh, work for uh, certain types of uh, NPCs, uh, so on and so forth. So this is his particular build. The advantage of um, this particular build is that it can be highly compact, very compressed. I have my own version of this, which uh, it's less compact, but allows for certain feedback and feed-forward mechanisms. Now, in the Pascal protected doors, I don't need any such mechanisms, so I've opted to use uh, Richard's uh, mechanism. One little quirk about this particular mechanism is that, for whatever reason, it only works from right to left, when the skeleton goes from right to left. Um, the mirror image does not work here. It's not such a big deal since ultimately because of teleportation it doesn't make any difference whether we go uh, left or right or right to left. In any case, back to the mechanism here. Alright, so um, just to show the wiring again, I show how I can toggle those two uh, hoik teeth to uh, dictate whether or not the skeleton is going to pass over that particular uh, uh, pressure plate. However, I can also have a type of feedback mechanism that will allow us to use this as a reset mechanism. So let's take a look at uh, the um, uh, the setup just on the left here. So again, I'm going to show the wiring, and now it's a little bit di uh, of a different uh, wiring setup in that the pressure plates, not only are they connected to the torches, but they're also connected to the two hoik teeth, meaning if I wish for the skeleton to actually activate the uh, pressure plates, I would have to, of course, um, uh, toggle these uh, hoik teeth, put the uh, top hoik into the background, the bottom hoik into the foreground, but when I do so, the pressure plate will be passed over, but not only will that affect the uh, torch, but it'll feedback and toggle the uh, top and bottom hoiks as well. So the, the advantage of this is that um, you have a system where you can check to see whether or not something is on, and if it's on, it'll be turned off. But if it's already off, well, it'll stay off. And that's because in the off state, the top hoik is in the foreground, and the pressure plates will not be activated. Yeah, so let's take a look at how that works. So I'm going to turn on both of these um, uh, torches. So we have on states, and again, we have the bottom hoiks in the foreground, so both of these pressure plates will get activated. And as the skeleton passes through, 
it'll not only shut off both of those uh, torches, but it'll flip the bottom and top hoiks uh, again. So let's take a look. Here we go. Any subsequent uh, skeleton I uh, send through will not be touching those particular wrap pressure plates. So this is the fundamental way in which you can set up a reset system. So no matter how complicated your electronics build happens to be, uh, whatever is in the on state within that mechanism, you can hook that all up to one of these reset uh, systems and it'll reset everything for you, turn everything off. Okay, so I use that to good effect in this uh, passcode um, uh, mechanism. All right, so now you have some um, uh, fundamentals here as far as what Hoytronics actually is and how it allows for inputs to dictate outputs. So let's uh, Let's next take a look at uh, certain components, larger components, of this uh, passcode uh, mechanism. But these are also components of uh, other builds that I featured uh, previously. So what we have here is a seven segment display that can display the digits uh, 0 through 9. Although for demonstration purposes, I'll only end up uh, displaying the numbers 5 or uh, 6. In the actual builds, Instead of there being just these two uh, uh, rows, these two tracks, there'll of course be 10 tracks representing the digits um, 0 through 9. Okay, in any case, the way that this works is, uh, let's focus on this 5 track here. When the skeleton is going to be sent from uh, right to left, along the way it'll pass over certain pressure plates that are wired to certain uh, segments within the 7 segment display. So let's take a look at the wiring here. It looks a little bit complicated, but if you follow the wires, you'll see that uh, each of these uh, blue and uh, red wires connect to individual segments within this display. So uh, the pressure plates uh, that are uh, present along a particular track, they'll light up the correct segments to uh, display that particular number on screen. Yeah, so let's take a look. If we hit this lever, this is again track 5, pass over the pressure plates, the, uh, the five of the uh, seven segments get lit up to show the number five here. Now, of course, I could send a skeleton along that path again, hitting the exact same pressure plates and thus turning this, uh, uh, this display off. Yeah, so there we go. Let's try that again with the, uh, uh, the six track. So pressure plates are activated this time, turning on six out of the seven uh, segments in a seven segment display and showing the number six. So we can see that uh, if you compare these two tracks, the six track and the five track, the six track has one additional pressure plate and that accounts for the additional segment being uh, lit up. And again, we can hit the uh, lever again, uh, send the skeleton down to shut off this uh, number. So aside from uh, sending a second skeleton down uh, any one of these tracks to shut off the display, we can also use the reset mechanism that I described uh, previously. So let's take a look how that works. So um, if you take a look at the reset mechanism, the reset track here, once again you'll note that all of the top hoists are in the foreground, meaning that none of these pressure plates are currently going to be activated if I send a skeleton down this path. So let's take a look. There we go. Nothing, nothing has happened. However, if I uh, activate the skeleton, go down the uh, five track or the six track and actually create a display here, the uh, wires will pass through and uh, toggle these uh, top and uh, bottom hoists. And we can see from the wiring here that that's exactly what's uh, happening. And in doing so, it'll signal an on state for um, some of these uh, segments and thus we can re use the reset mechanism to then shut off those on segments that have been turned on. So let's take a look. So again, I'll um, activate the skeleton to go down the uh, five track, turn on the number five. And as you can see in the reset track, some of these um, top hoiks have been pushed into the background and the uh, bottom hoiks directly below are in the uh, foreground now. Meaning when the skeleton is go going to go down the reset track, it'll only hit those pressure plates that um, are um, uh, tied up with the segments in the seven segment display that are currently on. And I'll just shut them off. All right, so let's take a look. There we go. 
So not only did it shut it off, but it toggled the um, any of the bottom hoiks back to top hoiks, which means once again, any subsequent skeleton is not going to touch any of those pressure plates. All right, so um, one might wonder, well, you know, why have a reset mechanism here? Um, you know, if we send uh, a skeleton down one of these paths, why not just send it down the same path again to shut off at number five? Well, it's not that simple because if um, if we're controlling what track a skeleton goes down, you know, one time it might go down the five track, but the next skeleton might uh, end up going down a completely different track. It's a lot more difficult to have a skeleton go down one track and have it go down again and through a different track as well. So it's a lot easier to just have one universal reset mechanism um, in all of these uh, builds. Okay, so that illustrated how seven segment displays work and how we can have reset mechanisms not only for seven segment displays but for just about anything. So the next thing to uh, take a look at a little bit of lag here. Uh, the next thing to uh, take a look at is um, how we can generate multi-digit numbers. Now I'm only going to demonstrate how to do it with two-digit numbers, but the pattern that you're going to see here can be extended uh, to uh, ultimately generate as many uh, digit numbers as we want. Alright, so first things first, we have the three tracks repeated again. We have the five track, the six track, and again the reset track. And what we saw just moments ago is repeated again on the left here. Okay, so same deal. We have um, uh, pressure plates that are going to be activated. It'll turn on once again the uh, uh, the appropriate number in the uh, seven segment display. So that's been repeated again on the uh, right, but now it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different because uh, these pressure plates, as you can see by the uh, top or the uh, uh, yeah the top hoiks in the uh, foreground, none of these pressure plates are going to be activated at least not the first time through. So this is how it's ultimately going to work. So let's say I'm going to be activating a skeleton to go down the six track. When it goes down the six track, six track, it'll ignore all these pressure plates along the way, including the uh, pressure plate on top of the teleporter. The teleporter will have played no role uh, the first time through. And it'll just move to this portion, and when it passes through these pressure plates, they, of course, will get turned on. Now, there is an additional pressure plate here, and this additional pressure plate feeds back to uh, the setup that we see on the right. Okay, so let's take a look at the wiring. Okay, we can see the uh, green wire. It's passing through uh, pressure plates here. So here's the logic behind it all. When the skeleton passes through, so it turns on the appropriate number in the uh, seven segment display on the left. It hits the pressure plate connected through green wire to um, this portion on the uh, right. Uh, when that pressure plate is hit, that's connected through green wire, it toggles every one of these uh, top hoiks, push, pushes them into the uh, background, and then um, takes all of these uh, bottom hoiks below and puts them in the uh, foreground. So this way, the second skeleton that passes through uh, along any of these tracks will actually activate these uh, pressure plates. And uh, once again, the number will show up in the seven segment display. Now, uh, we don't want the skeleton to go all the way through because whatever the skeleton you know, turned on here, we don't want it to you know, uh, activate more pressure plates and mess up the number that's displayed on the left. So there's a teleporter. So that way when the skeleton passes through, it'll actually be teleported away and it'll be teleported away to his death. So we can see here, the teleporters are hooked up by blue wire. They go up to these, uh, the teleporter here as lava and there's a spike, spiky ball trap. So um, this way we just yank the skeleton out of these uh, tracks so it doesn't mess up the seven segment display on the left. All right, so let's see this uh, in action. So let's say I want to input the number 65. So I do six first, and as we can see, it passed through, uh, or passed over the uh, pressure plates on the left here, turned on the number. And we can see that every one of these uh, top hoiks has, have been uh, actuated. The bottom hoiks are now in the uh, foreground. So any subsequent skeleton that I send through any of these tracks 
will now activate these pressure plates, make the numbers show up. And again, like I said, the skeleton will get teleported away uh, instead of going all the way to the end here. All right, so let's send a skeleton down the uh, five track. There we go. So down the five track, we've got the number 65. And as you saw, the skeleton got teleported instead of uh, going all the way to the left. All right, so we have our number uh, 65 here. And as before, we have a clear mechanism here, the reset mechanism, just send the skeleton all the way through. And as you can see, some of these um, top hoiks have been actuated, bottom hoiks are now in the foreground. So the skeleton will trigger some of these uh, pressure plates, the one that signal on states for the, um, um, the segments that are on in the seven segment displays. So it'll just shut them off. There we go. Let's try one more time. Let's say we want to generate the number 55. Send one skeleton down. Second one. There we go, 55. And then reset. So as I said before, in the, uh, the full mechanism, we have 10 rows representing digits 0 through 9. And thus, we can generate any two-digit number. Now, this portion on the, uh, on the right here, uh, that's tied up with the uh, the seven segment display that's on the right. This can be repeated again. So we can widen this whole thing, add another uh, portion with another seven segment display, and thus we can have um, the opportunity to generate uh, three digit numbers. And this can be as long as we want. Now the only downside to that is the more digits in your number, the longer the path the um, skeleton has to travel through, particularly when it comes to that first digit. But um, that's just the one particular uh, downside of these Hotronic systems that if they get really big, then there's gonna be a slight delay uh, uh, before you see um, uh, outputs. All right, so the next thing is to take a look at how this can be turned into an actual passcode mechanism. So the same thing is repeated here. Again, we have the three tracks, the five, the six track, and the reset track. But there are some additional columns that have been uh, inserted. Um, the notable columns that have been inserted, they're marked by the uh, amber background wall here. And we see some uh, pressure plates have been uh, added. Um, but not to every, uh, uh, every track, just one of them. So over here, we see that there is a pressure plate in the five track, but there is no pressure plate in the six track. And over here, there is a pressure plate in the six track, but there is no pressure plate in a five track. So the basic idea is um, when you're inputting the, uh, uh, the code, the code that's input, if it's the correct code, it'll be such that all of these pressure plates are gonna be hit, meaning the correct code for the mechanism that's illustrated right now is 56. So you have to input five first so that that pressure plate is gonna be hit. And you have to input six next so that pressure plate um, will be hit. Now, of course, uh, what are these pressure plates actually doing? All right, so let's turn our attention to the setup that's directly above me here. Okay, so in this particular uh, setup, we're gonna have a a skeleton that will um, uh, spawn here in this uh, teleporter and it'll be hoiked to the right. Now it'll encounter a junction point and at that junction point we have this uh, hoik tooth that can either be in the actuated or deactuated state and that will control as we saw before right at the beginning uh, whether or not the skeleton is going to go straight up or whether the skeleton is going to go to the right. Okay, So what you see right now is that hoik tooth is actuated, so therefore the skeleton will take the path upwards. Now when it takes the path upwards, it'll pass over the pressure plate there, and then you see the um, uh, the top hoik teeth right at the very top, and they'll just push the skeleton to the left. So it'll go right into the teleporter. And if we look at the wiring here, all three of these teleporters, they send the skeleton to the death teleporter here. All right, so if the skeleton takes the top path, it'll hit the pressure plate that's connected, as we can see, by blue wire to 
um, the red torches here. And the red torches, when they light up, they indicate the wrong code has been uh, input. All right, so same thing over here. If it turns out, we'll talk about this. If it turns out that the uh, the Hoyt tooth right at the junction is deactuated, then that would mean the skeleton will actually pass straight through to the right until it hits the next junction point. And at the next junction point, once again, either it'll go up or it'll go to the right, depending on the actuation state of that tooth. So currently it's uh, actuated, so therefore the skeleton is going to go up. Now, the pressure plate that it's going to hit, it's actually connected via the same blue wire as that first pressure plate we discussed. So this is also connected to the um, red torches, which once again, that would signal that the wrong code has been uh, input. So the right code, when it's input, it'll actually deactu deactuate all of these teeth so that the uh, skeleton will go all the way to the right and then be hoiked upwards. So the pressure plate that we see on the far right here, that's the key pressure plate that needs to be hit. So we can see from the wiring here that it's actually connected to green wires now. And of course, this wire can be extended so that it actually uh, passes through actuators um, on the door that we're trying to open. So bottom line is we are trying to deactuate every one of these Hoyt teeth at every one of these junctions so that the skeleton will end up passing uh, through and go through the uh, correct uh, pressure plate. So let's actually demonstrate that. So first, we're going to keep the uh, Hoyt teeth in a actuated state. Let's see what happens. All right, so there we have it. The skeleton went uh, through the top path and it turned on the, re uh, the red lights. The door wouldn't open. All right. If this hoik tooth is now deactuated, it's in the foreground, now the skeleton path will go across, hit this junction point, go straight up. Let's take a look. There we go. And again, wrong code. Um, we get uh, the red light turning on. However, if we deactuate all of these hoik teeth at all of these junctions, let's take a look what happens now. There we go. So the skeleton takes... Uh, um, the path that we wanted to take to open the door turns on the uh, green light here and yeah pass through the uh, pressure plate that's on the uh, on the far right all right so that's the that's the idea then um, in our um, key code mechanism we want to make sure that um, we input the uh, right uh, uh, digits so that the skeletons will pass over the uh, pressure plates that will deactuate the white teeth um, in this uh, mechanism here and thus uh, send the uh, skeleton down the right path to open the door. All right. Let's demonstrate that with the actual uh, uh, numbers. Okay, so reset everything. So like I said before, the correct code is 5, 6. So let's demonstrate that first. 5. Just check over here. Notice the uh, Hoyt tooth is now uh, in the uh, deactuated state, and then six. There we go. And Hoyt tooth in the uh, deactuated state, and notice how everything happened automatically there. When the uh, skeleton passed through the uh, six track, when it hit the uh, teleporter, it wasn't sent to the uh, the death chamber anymore. Instead, let's check the wiring here. Um, if you follow the uh, blue wire it actually connects to this particular teleporter. So in other words, the final uh, skeleton that passes through here gets teleported into this mechanism, thereby um, either activating the red torches or green torches. Green torch here because we input ultimately the uh, correct code 56. All right, so let's shut off the lights here. Reset. <clears throat> and this time, let's see what happens when we input the wrong code. So we'll uh, input six first, and because there was no pressure plates uh, activated along the way, it never deactuated that Hoyt tooth. So already we're doomed to fail. The next uh, number, let's just input six. And there we have it. So even though the next number six was the correct number, 
uh, or correct digit for that slot and it deactuated that Hoyt tooth, it doesn't matter because the first Hoyt tooth was still in the, a in the actuated state. All right, so the hypothetical door here failed to open, red light comes on, and thus um, this just reflects that the wrong code was input. All right, again, this can be uh, repeated, this setup can be repeated any number of times so that instead of just having two digit numbers, you can have three digit numbers, four digit numbers, so on and so forth, just so long as only one uh, pressure plate gets activated in any of these tracks. So again, these are just two tracks here, but in the full mechanism, we would have 10 tracks, digits zero through nine. So the pressure plates um, would only be activated in one of the uh, 10 tracks. All right, so that shows us how the passcode mechanism uh, functions. So there's only one last thing to address, and that is how exactly do we program the uh, passcode? So that approach is illustrated here. Now, we don't see the full mechanism. This is just how to um, uh, program uh, the uh, passcode. And keep in mind that um, this uh, programming of the uh, passcode, this has far reaching applications. It isn't just for passcodes. This is in effect how to write to memory and how to read from memory. Uh, back over here, this mechanism is essentially reading from memory, so to speak, but uh, memory is um, hard built into this uh, mechanism. It's based on where these pressure plates are located. You can't uh, change these pressure plates to any inputs. You would have to physically uh, uh, mine them and place them somewhere else. So this is hard-coded into the memory. So here, things are a little bit different. All right, so first things first, uh, the uh, blue lever here, this is the program lever, so to speak. And let's just show the wiring. So the, uh, the lever, it connects your blue wire uh, to um, all of these um, uh, these Hoik teeth, and you can see currently the top Hoiks are in the foreground and the bottom Hoiks are in the background. So that means any skeleton that passes through, it will not activate that pressure plate that's two tiles to the left. Now these pressure plates that are to the left, you can check the wiring here, they are connected to another pair of top and bottom Hoiks uh, some distance later. Once again, these particular pairs of top and bottom hoiks are in the uh, state that would not result in the activation of the pressure plates two tiles to the left. So here's the basic idea. We want to make it so that um, the uh, pressure plate along one of these tracks, either five, six, or seven, is the live pressure plate. It's the one that will get activated if a skeleton goes down that track. But all of the other pressure plates would have to remain in a deactivated state. So the way to do that is in one of these three tracks, you want to flip the uh, top hoik being in the foreground to the bottom hoik being in the uh, foreground instead. So the way that we can do that is first hit the program button and when we do so, whatever track I send the skeleton down, six, uh, five, six, or seven, it will hit that pressure plate now, which again, is connected through green wire. <clears throat> green wire to the other pair of uh, top and bottom hoiks, and it'll flip those as well. All right, so for instance, let's say we hit the seven lever. Okay, so notice how it flipped the top and bottom hoiks. Now the bottom hoik is in the foreground. Okay, so after programming this, we can hit the program lever to shut it off. And if we look at the uh, state of the situation right now, only in the seven track is the uh, pressure plate live. The pressure plate that's connected to this particular output signified by this uh, red torch. The other pressure plates along this uh, column are not live, they're not active. Any skeletons that pass through them will have no effect. And again, we can demonstrate that. Sending down six track, you can see it does nothing to that um, torch. Five track does nothing to that torch. But seven track, 
turn that off, on, off, on, so on and so forth. So we've just managed to uh, do a bit of programming here, and that is we've set which of these uh, tracks will have the live um, pressure plate. Okay, so if we want to make the pressure plate in the seven track not live anymore, I'll hit the program button again, send the uh, skeleton down that track, and again, it flip-flops the uh, top and bottom hoiks, and now that pressure plate is no longer gonna be active. Okay, hit the program button again, and we've essentially cleared memory, so to speak. We no longer have any live pressure plates. Program once again. This time, let's say we hit the six lever to make the pressure plates in the six track the live pressure plate. Okay, and again, hit the uh, program button, and now it's set. We've just written to memory. We now have live pressure plate in the six track, and again, seven track and five track, those pressure plates are not active, not live. Let's prove that. So down the seven track, no effect on the uh, red torch. Down the five track, no effect on the torch. Down the six track, turns it on, turns it off, so on and so forth. So that's the basic idea behind programming the, um, uh, the passcode here. And that is you have the lever, the program lever essentially that um, allows you to, um, to write to memory. It will uh, dictate which of the uh, pressure plates are going to be live. And um, uh, you can set the uh, passcode that way. All right, so that concludes an explanation of uh, all of the uh, mechanisms. And do keep in mind that uh, as I will uh, generate more videos down the line, I'll be returning to a lot of these uh, mechanisms. Um, this is uh, something that is repeated quite a bit in the various uh, in the various uh, builds. So uh, uh, one way to get a really good sense of what's going on here, aside from watching this video, is to actually build some of these uh, smaller mechanisms for yourself. Just get a feel for how uh, NPCs behave inside of uh, Hoik systems. See if you can construct junction points and send the skeletons down different paths or see if you can uh, generate these kinds of reset mechanisms that I've uh, illustrated in this particular video. I'm gonna make this particular world, this is a tutorial world, I'll make it available for download. Uh, you're certainly welcome to play around some of these uh, uh, smaller uh, setups here, uh, just the way I did in this uh, video demonstration. So to see what the, the full thing looks like with the uh, three-digit uh, passcode, uh, let's, um, let's teleport here uh, to the right. So we can see that now all of a sudden we have um, the reset track at the bottom, but then we have 10 uh, tracks at the top corresponding to digits um, uh, 1 through 9 and there's 0 at the very top. And we also have uh, three seven, segments, uh, seven segment displays here. Okay, so this part on the left, that's for the uh, first segment on the left, uh, the first seven segment display on the left. The part in the middle is for the middle seven segment display. And the part on the right is for the right seven segment display. Uh, so uh, I won't be going through this in a lot of detail, but you're welcome, again, to download this world and examine some of the wiring. It looks a little bit complicated, but if you break it down to individual components, if you keep in mind what I mentioned uh, already in this uh, video, uh, you'll find that uh, it's actually not that difficult to ultimately piece together what is going on. Uh, one thing I will talk about, though, is this part over here. So. I've demonstrated how things are done with uh, skeletons um, as the uh, signaling agents. The only problem with skeletons is that if you go off screen, they'll eventually despawn. In fact, they might despawn immediately. And that, of course, creates a significant problem. You're trying to send a skeleton down a track and it'll just disappear on you before it even gets there or when it's halfway through, so on and so forth. So that's bad. And in this particular uh, passcode mechanism, of course, we want to have as much of this mechanism off screen so that people can't peek at any portion of it and be able to tell what the actual passcode is. So uh, to solve that, we use uh, these 
what I call just character NPCs. And uh, uh, here we're using a guide um, uh, that, as the signaling agent is going to do the work for us. So the thing about uh, these character NPCs is that they don't despawn or they don't disappear, provided that one of two things are true. Number one is, if it's daytime, you can have uh, one of these NPCs doing its thing in a um, Hoik setup, and it's not going to go anywhere, so long as it's daytime. At the nighttime, however, uh, these character NPCs immediately teleport back to their designated house, um, provided that either the house is not in view or the character NPC is not in view. It's also provided that uh, there is an available house to teleport back into if that NPC doesn't have an assigned house. So um, this, of course, a slight problem. Uh, this kind of teleportation back into a house at night. So the way that uh, it's solved in this particular build, okay, when you're by the uh, keypad, the, um, the NPC house is actually uh, slightly uh, within view. And so long as the house is in, within view, like I said, the uh, NPC will not teleport back to that uh, house. So it solves things uh, perfectly. That just means that uh, since we can only use one NPC instead of multiple skeleton statues, uh, we need to um, engineer this teleport hub so that we can send the NPC to the appropriate uh, destination. Now the teleport hub, this might look familiar, this is again um, uh, uh, various uh, paths that the uh, NPC can take, various junction points, and here's the basic idea. Let's just take a look at uh, what would happen if we pulled um, the one lever. So we want to send the, um, uh, the NPC into the track that corresponds to the number one. So let's check the wiring here. Again, it looks pretty complicated, but just focus on the, um, on the blue wire here that's connected to the lever uh, that's labeled number one. So this blue wire connects to the uh, hoik that has an actuator on it, hoik tooth with an actuator on it uh, right at the junction. Okay, so um, whether that Hoik tooth is in the actuated or deactuated state will control whether the uh, NPC will go straight to the right or if it'll go straight up. Now, if the one lever is uh, pulled, it'll actually actuate that Hoik tooth, which will cause the NPC to go straight up. And when it goes straight up, we want to well, we want to have that NPC immediately reset that Hoik tooth, uh, deactuated again. And that's why you have the uh, pressure plates uh, directly above here. And you can see uh, the wiring, the uh, pressure plate immediately connects back to that actuated tooth. So the NPC will be hoiked upwards and the uh, top hoiks at the very top here will just propel the uh, NPC immediately to the left. And that teleporter here, the first one, is connected to the one track. So it's connected to the teleporter over here. I'll just send the um, NPC down this path. And we can see by the wiring that that's the case. Okay, by the blue wire from this teleporter, it just connects to this first teleporter here. So there are 10 teleporters. Each one connects to the tracks one through zero, or one through nine, and then you have the zero track at the very top. Yeah, so that's how that particular mechanism works. Now, of course, uh, we have to get this uh, NPC to actually move into this uh, uh, teleporter hub, which means that each one of these uh, levers associated with a number, uh, there's another wire uh, coming from these uh, levers. You can see here, it's the green wire that runs through all of them. And that green wire is connected to a actuated um, set of uh, uh, bottom hoists. So when those are activated, when they're brought to the foreground, they'll immediately propel the NPC to the uh, to the right. Along the way, I'll check the wiring again. Along the way, there's a pressure plate that will be hit, which means um, these uh, deactuated hoik teeth will just be actuated again. So thus resetting the hoik teeth in this uh, in this little house. Now let's let's see how that works. So if I pull uh, the one, yeah, as I described. The uh, NPC was hoiked immediately upwards and went down track one. Let's look at another one, track three, since it's within view. 
Yeah, there we go. And again, um, let's try to. All right. So as you can see, this uh, the NPC gets directed to different teleporters, depending on which of these uh, levers are I, I actually uh, pulled. And of course, the uh, one one three two is the uh, wrong passcode. And here, I'll uh, clear this mechanism. All right. So just take a quick look at other portions of this. Uh, um, of this uh, setup. So right at the very top, you see that uh, little little mechanism that we described uh, previously, where uh, so long as the correct um, pressure plates are uh, hit, when you input the correct uh, key code, it'll end up uh, deactuating the uh, hoik teeth in this uh, mechanism and propel the uh, NPC down this uh, hoik path and hoik it up, hit the pressure plate, the correct one, to show the wiring. You can see that uh, the pressure plate here on the far right is connected through green wire and that green wire eventually connects to the door uh, that uh, will be open. Alright, there is one thing though that I didn't explain in the tutorial so it's a little puzzle for you. Let's see if, uh, if you can figure out what exactly is going on with um, uh, these little bits that are directly above. Okay, these are uh, not completely essential to uh, making this work, but they do enable certain passcodes uh, to be set that would otherwise not be possible with um, uh, with this particular uh, uh, set of uh, Hoyt paths. So, challenge for you then. Let's see if you can figure out what exactly uh, the additional uh, a bit of mechanism here actually uh, does. But like I said, I'll uh, include this as part of the uh, download so you can um, hop on here, play around, and see if you can uh, uh, ultimately uh, deduce what is going on precisely. All right, so that brings us uh, to an end to this uh, tutorial. Hope you found it uh, enlightening. I'll be doing uh, even more in-depth uh, tutorials as time goes on. So one of the things that I want to do is just stimulate a little bit more interest in um, Hoytronics and get people building, because currently uh, there are very few people that are actually trying to build. I you know, get a lot of positive uh, comments with regards to the Hoytronics builds that I present, but I think it'll be even better if we get other people involved and see what other people can actually uh, come up with here. Uh, Hoytronics is a relatively new thing, and uh, Terraria, Terraria Engineering um, has definitely come a long way, um, but we still have a long way to go. And there's a massive design space that Hoytronics has opened up. And you know now is the time to really get into engineering because of uh, so many things that can still be uh, discovered. And the nice thing is that you can make these uh, builds you know, as big as you want, really, mainly because these character NPCs, they can do their thing off screen and um, uh, allow for this kind of uh, elaborate uh, building. So in any case, uh, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed the uh, video here. And um, yeah, try your hand. I download the maps, try your hand at these uh, builds, and um, um, you know, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy the uh, this aspect of uh, Terraria, Terraria Engineering. All right, so we'll see you soon in my upcoming uh, Hoik uh, uh, tutorials. All right.